everyone welcome back to my channel it's Karen Lavender Clothesline I think I say that in my sleep so this morning it took me quite a while to get out of the house you know the more you do YouTube and the more your eBay store grows I feel like I don't know how long I'm gonna keep all the balls in the air I feel like a master juggler sometimes let me just watch what I'm doing here but always thrilled to be an eBay seller and a YouTube creator. I am enjoying the process, although some days it is truly a juggling act. So today we're just hitting the road. We're going to Goodwill. Goodwill is my number one thrift store, if you can't already tell. I find the most items there for resale. With the prices going up at Goodwill, it is becoming more and more of a challenge to not overspend and to make sure that what I'm buying has enough profit built in to warrant the work. You always want to do that. You want to make sure what you're picking up is not bringing a dollar or two, unless you're just doing it as a hobby and you enjoy it and you're not really looking to create a full-time income for yourself. But we're on the road. We're going to Goodwill. I'm bringing you guys with me. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go thrifting. So right away my eye is drawn to two different things. The sign that says cheer up a little and this basket. I call these French wire baskets and I'm always attracted to these. So leaving this one behind might have been a little bit of a mistake. I know the large antique oyster baskets or egg collecting baskets can bring really good money, but for some reason, I don't know, I didn't pick that one up. Probably would have brought about $25. Here I'm looking at plates that are Oscar de la Renta. And I know that Oscar de la Renta, of course, is a big designer for fashion and for home, but I kind of didn't realize that they did dishes of this type. Now these are the Refinement Black set. And while I'm not really picking up sets of dishes, famous less words, I always like to keep an eye on different patterns in different brands because sometimes you can make crazy good money with dishes. But at this point, it really has to be something high profit to kind of tease me into picking them up. And you know me, I turn the corner and see a little tiny wood basket or box. That was Hobby Lobby. I love little wood boxes of any kind, but Hobby Lobby is not enough to tempt me. Those Oscar de la Renta plates that we were talking about, probably $20 for a place setting of four. Here I'm seeing this lattice or trellis pattern. It was just called stoneware. And again, I'm not really buying a lot of dishes. It really has to be something antique and spectacular to tempt me, but it never stops me from looking at dishes. A lot of times when I feel tempted to pick up different dishes, I just remember how heavy they are for shipping cost. Here is a very interesting mug. I thought that was Merit brand cigarettes. And I'm like, am I remembering that correctly? And here's the second one. So I guess maybe Merit gave these away with coupons or I don't know. I have no idea in a gift shop. So leave a comment down below if you know about Merit cigarette cups. There I'm just looking at that, trying to decide if that is a hamster ball or an ice cream maker. I think it's an ice cream maker. And I always stop to check out any kind of stained glass, even if it's not really genuine stained glass. I'd like to take a look at these sun catchers. That one wasn't that great, so I do leave it behind, but I do sell quite a few of those. This piece caught my attention, Beacon Hill. I believe it was a candle holder, a votive. More plates, more dishes, gold rimmed Gibson. Kind of like wedding china. And now I'm in an all out dishes looking mode. These are Chinese garden put out by Sheffield, I believe, or Schofield. I really liked this pattern, white peonies with a robin red breast. But again, there's not a lot of profit and to ship dishes by the time the buyer pays for the shipping and you spend all of that time in packing, 
it really eats up all of the profit. But I thought these were especially pretty. So of course I have to look at the cups too. Now I think if I was looking for dishes for personal use, I would probably get something more practical these days. But truth be told, I'm eating a lot on paper plates. And as I'm walking down the aisle, I see the crazy daisy pattern of Corel. Corel placemats in this pattern can bring good money. I've seen the vinyl type placemats and the placemats bring more than the dishes do. I think if you're gonna make a decision to sell dishes, I think Corel would be a good choice because a little less breakable, a little bit lighter, and you can just fit more in a box because they're so thin. I love when I see a young person thrifting and enjoying it, and just looking at everything. I wanna hang out with kids like that. Okay, another set of dishes is catching my attention. Boy, there's a lot of dishes today. So these are Ascot service plate. They're a decorative wall plate. Kind of pretty, very English looking. Something you'd hang on the wall for decoration. But again, $4 a plate. And these don't bring more than, I'm gonna say, five to seven a plate maybe. And now we're just zeroing in on the last set of dishes. Just a blue stripe. But I figured, why not? I was already in the dishes mood, so we'd keep that going. And now I spot this octopus. I love a good octopus. You could see he came from Home Goods. And I was trying to tell if Goodwill wanted more than Home Goods did, and I think it was pretty comparable. I think Home Goods wanted $9.99 and Goodwill wanted $6.99. Okay, I lied. One more set of dishes. I think this is Blue Orchard. Let's see what it says. Noritake, Blue Orchard. Now you would think Noritake, oh, Noritake, let's get these. Nope, they don't bring money either. For me, the majority of dishes I see are not worth picking up. It's rare I pick up big sets of dishes. So now we are on the pink aisle, I believe. Chasing Lola. That's very cute. I guess Lola is a cat. I think I want a cat named Lola. You know, it's funny because I go to many Goodwills and it is just amazing at most Goodwills I go to are like this very organized, clean shelves. But the Goodwill that I am in the most, which I always talk about, Goodwill Route 30, is a disaster lately. It is so disorganized. Here I'm looking at Melamine plates or Melamac. I think these are Melamine. A seashell design. I did like these. If I had a beach house, I would want those. And now for some reason, I'm putting them up one by one to get to the print underneath because my eye is catching some kind of artwork. And there it is, just a print of some handbags or different decorator bags. So if you are selling on an online platform, eBay or Etsy, and you sell china or some kind of dishes, leave a comment down below of how many pieces you're shipping out a year or what kind of business you're doing. I know there are quite a few resellers who do dishes, but for me, I've pretty much given it up. And now a cart came out where one of the employees said, oh, help yourself digging. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I found these gorgeous, gorgeous, ornate frames, maybe Hollywood Regency. These things are beautiful. $3.99, get in my cart, yes, please. 
Oh, I love these. There's nothing like a thick wood frame with a little tiny picture. And I did run my finger gently over the print. There was some texture. I was really hoping that these were originals. I don't think they are. But nonetheless, oh, I love these. I think these are going to do really well. And I was excited to put them in my cart. Look how pretty these are. That's a triple love. Love, love, love these. Okay, let's keep going. And as I turn the corner, I see this darling cat. This is carved. This is hand carved and hand painted. This is by master craftsman Christopher LaMontagne. I believe he's out of Connecticut. I am thrilled to find an original piece of artwork like this. So beautiful. I believe Christopher has a YouTube channel and you can watch him take pen and paper or pencil and paper and sketch out what he's going to carve. He then carves it and paints it right in the YouTube videos. Over the moon happy to find one of his cat statues. And here I'm just looking at two pottery ducks and I'm thinking I'm going to take them. And then I see this funny chip, but it's painted on his bill. So I'm thinking, okay, it's meant to be there. But as I pick them up to look in my cart, I see his little wing is chipped, and I believe they had one other chip. So back they go. Most of the damage was on the one, but I didn't want to separate them. I felt if somebody was going to buy them, they would want both. And now we're cooking. <laughs> now I'm putting things in my cart. Sometimes it's a slow go, and you have to look at a lot. But here I find four beautiful mugs, and yep, I'm going to peel back this sticker as carefully as I can. These new scannable barcode stickers are more of a challenge because you really have to be careful not to hurt that barcode. These are the Pioneer Woman. Large mugs in a gorgeous floral print. These should do quite well. If you don't know about the Pioneer Woman, a lot of her items bring very good money. And here I'm finding these four mugs. Beautiful condition. Absolutely, yes. So all four go in my cart. Look how pretty that looks. I have a pretty cart going on. <laughs> you know, I have to say a lot of other YouTubers when I watch them and they're just showing, you know, them thrifting in stores and their shelves are just so beautifully decorated and they're just picking up these vases. And there's Karen Lavender clothesline in her thrift stores, usually just throwing all kinds of craziness in my cart. Everything from clothing to, oh my goodness, hard goods slippers, artwork. I'm just a wild kind of shopper. And the last item that I knew I wouldn't buy, but I really wanted to take a look at was this baby cradle, handmade. Now, while we might be thinking the floral and the birds is sweet, I don't care for that. Maybe that's kind of bold to say. Somebody painted that. We don't know that the paint is safe for a baby. It's stenciled on, but the workmanship of this cradle is gorgeous. I would rather see this left unpainted. I don't mind a stenciled, you know, wall border or something in a baby's room, but to paint the inside of this, I don't know. I'd rather see it left in the original form. Well, I've often shared where I do the majority of my eBay shipping from in my office, which is this dresser and these poles holding tissue paper and bubble wrap. Today, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the packing supplies I use because this is my number one question from you guys. Can I share where I get my supplies from? What kind of supplies? What kind of sizes? All right, let's get started. And I will just do a brief overview of where I organize my packing supplies. Talking tissue paper. So this is the eBay branded tissue paper. A lot of times I get the black and white. I like this the best. They also have it in multicolor. I'll use that. Sometimes they have holiday, but mostly I go for the black and white. And you can also get black and white stickers for this. Just something to buy with your eBay store subscription. I do have fancier tissue papers. Thank you, Melissa, my daughter, Fresh Bloom and Clothing, who actually has a website selling tissue paper. Look how gorgeous these are. 
I will use this paper for items that I just want it to look a little special and I have little stickers that say thank you on them that coordinate with the paper. So those are tissue papers. This tissue paper is not cheap by any means, but if you order from Melissa's site, she gives really good subscription deals. So Melissa Fresh Blooming Clothing also has a website of her own besides selling on eBay and Facebook Marketplace local pickup, she sells different shipping supplies for the reseller. So you might want to go over and visit her website. Underneath is the packing paper. This is the Duck brand packing paper and last but not least, white tissue paper. I use this to stuff the insides of shoes, just different things where I really want it to be nice. Sometimes if I'm mailing a man's sport coat and it's a nice sport coat, I will stuff the sleeves. If it's a gown, I stuff the insides of different folds or pleats to keep them from getting too wrinkled. Again, I get this from either Costco or Sam's Club. I believe it's 400 sheets for, don't quote me on this, I've forgotten how much it is. You can get it after Christmas time on clearance a lot of times. So as many of you know and recognize, this is the dining room in my house. This is where I film a lot of my haul videos right in front of the big window. Here I also have a built-in break front. This is original to the house. And up top, I will keep any breakable china that I don't want to put downstairs in the basement. But this part of the break front is a favorite of mine. So when I moved into the house, this was like a brown color. I just painted it white. I painted everything white and I topped it with glass. When I have a lot of folding to do of inventory, I will use this extra surface for folding and for preparing items to ship out. As you can see, I keep my camera stuff in different boxes. But this is what I want to talk about today. This break front is very deep. I don't know if the camera is really picking this up. So what I do is I have a clipboard with an inventory checklist of supplies that I use for shipping out. So I'm going to do this if you want to see what type of supplies I use as far as bags and packing peanuts, things like that. You can just stop the film, stop the video at this part and you can make a copy of this so that if you're interested in what size bags I use, mainly for my clothing and then the other wrapping items or wrapping material for my hard goods, you can go ahead and screenshot this. But for now, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what this looks like and I am ready to order inventory because the fourth quarter was wonderful and I am running low. So I'm just going to go over a few things in here to show you what type of things I'm really keeping great supply of in the house. I also have boxes stored downstairs along with some more um, padded mailers and tape and things like that. But for now, we're just going to go over this. So these are the poly mailers that I use to ship out clothing. There are four sizes or four different types, I should say. This first one is the smallest one that I carry. This is 10 by 12. And as you can see, it's in a pink color. I like to use a bright color because if a buyer says, hey, I didn't get my item, a lot of times you can say it was mailed in a bright pink or purple, whatever color you choose to use, mailer, ask your postman if he remembers, he or she remembers delivering it. And that gives the buyer a little bit of a sense of that this item is memorable. Okay, so that is the first one. The next size up is a 12 by 15. So this smaller size is for children's clothing, blouses, things that are thinner, gloves, things like that. The bigger size more for jackets, um, different things that I'm not gonna ship priority. These are pretty much first class or things that I don't wanna use padded mailers for. So that is the second size. Then up here, I carry the same size as that, again, 12 by 15, in a white or a gray. I buy whichever one is cheaper, and these are for men's items, because I really don't want to send out a man's whatever coat or jacket sport coat in a pink mailer. So I will go ahead and stock the white or the gray. Right now I have the white because they were less expensive. This next bag is the largest poly bag that I carry. I ship quilts in this, any kind of fabric, anything that is big and bulky, and I don't want to add the weight of a box, but it's not breakable. So I have 
put all kinds of things in this, coats, gowns, um, and the gown is pre-wrapped in a clear recycle bag rather than a Ziploc bag. 19 by 24. Again, I'm always looking for the best price for this, and again, I always look for two mil thick. Two mil thick means the thickness of the actual wrap. And as you can see, it has the pre-sealable, you know, this is rip and stick. I, I guess that's what that's called. All right, so the biggest bag is 19 by 24. So the majority of times I'm ordering these types of bags from You Pack and Ship. I will write their name on the screen, but I always check when I'm going to order them that that is the cheapest price. Now, the only thing I look for and be careful of is that I want these in two mil thick. That assures that they're not the really cheap ones that rip easy. I like my items to get there in one piece. All right, another thing that I stock a lot of is clear Ziploc bags. And I ordered these in two sizes. Right now, I only have one size in here because I have a box that came in I have to open. These are either 10 by 12 or 12 by 15. Again, I always Google it to see who is offering it the least expensive. Bags can be very heavy, so you wanna make sure your supplier is offering free shipping and they're absorbing that cost. All right, so those are the bags on this side. And as you can see, I'm doing inventory. I like this stacked up all the way so that I don't have to worry about, you know, things running out because I ship thousands and thousands of items a year. There's nothing worse than getting up in the morning and having to ship out 30 things and you don't have the proper materials. So I try to avoid that at all costs. As you can tell, hundreds and hundreds of this is my favorite flat rate product. This is USPS flat rate envelope. It is a padded envelope and this is a set price when it doesn't go up. So in other words, anything you can fit in this and mail in the continental U.S. is going to be one price. Now these do go up and down as the Postal Service raises their rates. So you always want to make sure that you know what it's costing to put an item in this, what the postage is going to cost, because sometimes it actually works out cheaper to use a poly mailer. So you always want to keep an eye on that. Here we have Duck Brand. Let me just get this back in here. Duck Brand packing paper. I get these at Walmart, if I can get it out. 220 sheets, and I believe these are $15. So somebody do the math. I think it works out six cents a sheet, and I use these all day long, mostly for hard goods, once in a while to wrap shoes. So if I have a pair of shoes that can go in a poly mailer, but I really want them protected, so I don't want to use a box, I will wrap each shoe in tissue paper and then in a packing paper to really make sure the shoe doesn't get down. Okay, moving over on this side, and like I said, normally this is always filled up to the top. Here we have a blank space for more tape, and if you can see back there, more padded mailers. This is the eBay tape that I buy with my eBay store subscription. It is just an eBay branded tape. It works okay, good enough, and that way I don't have to pay for tape. So if you have a store subscription through eBay, whether it's a starter, a basic, uh, premium, anchor, and then I think there's like a commercial, I think they all receive some sort of credit. I could be wrong about that. So if you're looking into getting an eBay store subscription, you wanna see what perks come along with that monthly subscription. These are just the simple um, spiral bound notebooks. It's a one subject notebook that I log my items in. So when items come into the house, the item is logged, what it is, measurements, the date. And then when I go to list the item, this book of information will match up with the photos I've taken of the item. So I can just sit at my desk and go by the book, go by what I have entered. And then if you save these books, they also are a log of your inventory. So it's a very simple system. Guys, I don't use spreadsheets. I know a lot of people will just gasp at that, but I don't have time to use spreadsheets. So I save all of my receipts and I have my journals and that is proof of what I've bought. And um, I can look back in these. And like I said, I have these all stored downstairs. All right, so that is what is going on in this break front.
Again, this is my inventory sheet. I just create this on like Microsoft Office and it helps me keep track of what items I am running low on. All right, now I'm gonna take you downstairs. We're just gonna look a little bit at the boxes that I pick up and um, packing peanuts and bubble wrap. I'll talk about that. So in this corner of the basement is another shipping station. I can ship large items down here. I can put everything together, but I do bring them upstairs then because they are being picked up by USPS or I'm bringing them to my local CVS pharmacy for UPS. And um, I don't print labels down here. So we're just gonna get started quick. I'll give you a little overview of what type of boxes are my favorite. So my all time favorite boxes for larger hard breakables are the number seven. This is a USPS product. This goes by calculated weight. This is a 12 by 12 by 10, I believe. Let's take a look at it and see what it is. It is a, where are the dimensions on this? 12 by 12 by 8. This is a USPS priority mail service product, and these are calculated. So this is going to cost different amounts. It's not a flat rate, but this is my favorite box to put any kind of breakable in. Again, I order them by the hundreds. You can get all of these supplies free on USPS website. It is called Free Supplies. You just create a free account, and they mail this to your house. Can I say how wonderful this is. Now, the only time I don't use these products is when I want to use a plain box, when I don't want the item to be priority, because all of these products are priority. So if you have something that's bigger and you want it in a box, but it's flat rate, meaning under one pound and under 12 by 12 by 12 inches, you're going to need a plain box. But these are some of the boxes I use. These are the regional boxes. Regional is where the country, our country is divided by regions. I think there are four. And these boxes are very cost effective if the buyer lives by you. So this is a regional A box. And this is the smaller regional A box. And you can see most of this is matched up. This is just a regular priority mailbox. I don't think this is flat rate. Up I lied. Medium flat rate. Okay, so in this corner up here, let me bring this down, are my triangular boxes that I ship. Baseball bats, golf clubs, and similar things like that. Anything long and narrow, sometimes even artwork if it's heavy enough, rolled artwork. This is called a medium mailing tube. And when you fold it, it folds into a triangle. Usually I have one built sitting up here, but I used it the other day and I haven't rebuilt one as a sample because I know that what those are. Okay, another favorite, this is the shoe box. So this is what this looks like here. Lots of shoes, mostly men's shoes and heavier women's shoes go in this. Again, this is a calculated box. In other words, you have to put in the weight for this. So you can see the sizes and pretty much I just keep a great supply of this. These boxes here are all tissue paper. I believe these are all branded. These are the eBay branded ones. Again, more small boxes, backup of packing paper, clear cling wrap. So you can buy industrial cling wrap, and I use these for things where I want to hold several items together, but I don't want to add a lot of weight to it. So I don't use it that often, but still, when I need it, this is great to have. As you can see, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. <laughs> these are four rolls of bubble wrap. And I buy these, again, great supply. I'm getting this from American Bubble Boy. I just started buying from them. In my opinion, the quality is a little bit cheaper than when I get it from like Office Max, but the price is much better. This is a small bubble. I think this is called 7 eighths. And I pretty much primarily use this once in a while. I get the big bubble wrap, but I find this great because when I put an item in a box, I'm using the small bubble wrap, packing paper, and packing peanuts, which you can see over here. These are the large packing peanuts. Let's go around and see if I can give you a better shot. So here are the packing peanuts I'm presently using. Unfortunately, they are not biodegradable. I have ordered biodegradable more environmentally friendly, very costly. So 
up until now, I've been trying to alternate between the two. They say reuse, reduce, recycle. So I'm, my hope is that whoever gets these packing peanuts reuses them. That's the best we can do at this point, and they are fully recyclable. 14 cubic feet. I buy six to eight of these at a time, and I have to make two trips. I'm getting these right from UPS, not USPS, UPS in my local town. So I am paying, I believe, $34, $32, 32 or 34 for 14 cubic feet. And like I said, I always have a lot of it on hand. And then the ever-present jumble of <laughs> boxes from the grocery store, from friends, from my postal carrier. I just make sure I always have lots of boxes built and unbuilt. Okay, guys, so that is just a brief overview of what type of shipping supplies I use, the products I use. Um, also, I forgot to mention, these are labels. They are my Dymo labels, and I am using my Dymo less and less. I have moved on to the Rolo, and I have the rolls upstairs. Still have backup of this. So if anybody is in my area and wants to buy some Dymo labels, I will sell them cheap. I don't know how many I have in here. And yep, I am selling them. They are um, local pickup only. I will not ship these too heavy. All right. So that is a little overview. Hopefully that was helpful to some of you who always ask what size poly mailers I use, what size clear bags, how I'm wrapping, you know, what different um, products I'm using to make sure my items arrive to the buyer safely. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.